I'm going to try to boil down everything uh, I know about procrastination or personal productivity into one simple rule. So stay with me. So if there's one thing I would say, if we could sum up how to overcome procrastination, how to increase our productivity, how to actually achieve and meet our goals. If we could sum it up, what would it be? And this is, you know, we want to find a way to definitely increase our, our productivity, um, you know, many times over by factors of, you know, five to 10 times higher than maybe what we are achieving when we're procrastinating. And it's easily done. All we have to do is not increase our motivation or, or anything like that. It's just understand why it happens. And it's a little mechanism we have to understand. That's what procrastination is. It's a little mechanism. We just, as soon as you understand how it works, it's very easy to deactivate it. So this is, I'm going to boil it all down. This is what I would tell somebody who is, suffers with procrastination. This is, the, this is the rule. This is the law. You ready? Here it is. Pick a time for action and refuse to move that time. That's it. That's it. That's how you deactivate the mechanism that causes procrastination. Let me say it again. This is the rule. Pick a time for action and refuse to move that time. Now, I'm talking here about to, how to become more productive, right? Notice I didn't say anything about taking action or doing more. Isn't that interesting? That I, I'm, we're talking here about how to increase productivity and I didn't say anything in my major rule about taking more action. The only thing I said was pick a time for action and refuse to move that time. You see, this is why so many people struggle with this issue. People think procrastination is about a lack of action, right? What if I don't do it? I'll pick the time and what if I don't do it? That's not the point. Highly productive people, they, they often don't take action. They even say they're going to do it, but they don't do it quite often. But one thing they, they don't do is move the time that they had committed themselves to. I can do it later. That's the mechanism. First of all, there's the highly productive people are decisive in when they're going to do it. And once they've decided to do it at that time, they don't change their mind about it. It's either done at that time or it's not done at all. So hopefully that, that this rule is sinking in here a little bit more. It's not about action. You're allowed not to do it after you pick the time, right? You really are. That is, that is not a, an unhealthy thing. That's just you deciding, actually, no, I'm not doing it. It's just changing your mind. But if we don't pick a fast our time, we're being indecisive. And if we move the time that we have selected, that means we're shifting a boundary. And the work is now moving us rather than us. Where we're doing. We're, the, the work is doing us rather than we're doing the work. Okay, now you, you may decide to do it the next day or something. That's perfectly fine. But on any given day, you, you decide when the work is going to happen, not the work decides when you're going to do it. Right? It keeps moving. You don't allow work to move, especially if you have a procrastination issue with it. So we refuse to move the boundary and we become decisive. Right? We pick a time for action and refuse to move that time. Now, if you can try that for two or three days and you stick to that, I always have a, I have a time picked for when I'm going to do it. And if I don't have one, I should have one. That's my first priority. Pick a time. What time? Well, we spend a lot of time in this, thinking about that. Well, you know, I'm not quite ready. Maybe the time, maybe I'll feel better later. Um, Maybe this evening will be better. Well, actually, no. Well, maybe I'll see. I'll pick, maybe I'll be ready to pick a time in an hour. No, just pick a time. It doesn't really matter what time. I tell people, don't rush yourself. 
Um, that's about it. Um, give yourself plenty of time, but as long as you have a time selected, right, doesn't matter. So that's first part is just pick the time and then refuse to move that time. So if you say to yourself, I'm going to work today at uh, 3 p.m. Good, I've picked the time. And now I'm just going to refuse to move it. So the work either gets done at 3 p.m. Or, well, maybe I could do it at 4 p.m. No, you see, now I'm moving it. <laughs> so it doesn't move. So it either gets done at 3 p.m. Or, or it's not going to be done at all. That's it. If you, if you don't do it at 3 p.m., no need to beat yourself up. That's perfectly fine. That is not the key issue here. Again, you're allowed not to do it. But what you're not allowed to do is to move the time once you have selected it. I know I've been so repetitive here, but this is such a, a, a breakthrough if you can get this for yourself. It's these two aspects that are in this one rule that are tripping everybody up, refusing to pick a time to begin with, and then once they have picked it, they move it. So be decisive, have it, I'll read it again, pick a time for action, and refuse to move that time. If you can stick to that rule for a week, and just don't even worry about how many hours work you need to do or anything like that, stick to that one rule for a week, and just watch what happens. Even if you do no work at all, you decide the time rolls around and, and you say, well, I'm not going to do it. I, I guarantee even if you've done no work, you'll still feel better about yourself because there's this constant changing of the moving of the time that actually erodes our self-confidence and our self-esteem and our self-respect. So bear that in mind. That's the one rule I would use. And uh, let me know how it works for you. And I think it'll work pretty well. I'll see you in the next video and uh, take care. Bye for now.